Finally, part five, heat of fusion of water. So you're supposed to design your own experiment to find the heat of fusion of water within bounds. And you should have put ice and water together and melted the ice. So you should have the mass of water before you have the ice in it. You should have the mass of ice. And you should also have the initial temperature of the water in the Colorado River, again, the same. And then the final temperature of everything is the same. If you put ice in there, it better be cooling down. So the ice is warming up and the water in the Colorado River are cooling down. So our equation is the same setup as before. They're all the same. Uh, there are several Q's you have to work with here. And let me start from the right hand side and go to the left. Q cal, that's the Q of the calorimeter. We've had that before. And that's CP. This is the average, remember, from part one. Delta T. Q water, MCSP delta T. We've had that before. Uh, now, there's Q of the ice water, so it's that water warming up, or this is the ice going from, right after it melts, going up in temperature. So that's the MCSP delta T. You still have a CSP for water like before, but note this, T final minus T initial. T initial has to be zero because it started as ice. So if it started at zero, and it's warming up as liquid water up to, in our case, 8 degrees. This has to be a zero there. All right, finally, this one is kind of the funky one. The ice is melting. Now, this actually is a phase change. And in this phase change, there's no temperature change because the ice is just melting at zero degrees C. So this is actually an enthalpy change. So now we've seen two examples. In parts three and four, the enthalpy change that was added that was not a temperature change, though in three and four were both reactions. In here, part five, this enthalpy change comes from a phase change. So enthalpy changes, two common areas, you'll see them appear, phase change and reaction. Okay, this is an example of a phase change. Whenever you have a phase change, you need a Q. Uh, and in this case, we're going to be dealing with mass uh, because they want the delta H in joules per gram. Because they want it in joules per gram, you're going to have a multiplier in front, which is the mass of ice that you added. So there's really four parts to this calculation. Uh, you really just need all the Qs and to be able to put them together. So let's try that. The Q of water which we see in the previous part, that's the MCSP delta T. Here's the mass of the water originally. CP, that's a constant, we've seen that before. And then the final temperature is eight, and it started in our case at 25 degrees C. So we get minus three, five, five, six joules. Then you need to do the same sort of thing, but for the calorimeter, because we need to know that one as well. Here's the average from part one. 8 minus 25, and you get negative 3349 joules. For the next part, Q of ice, uh, which is M, the mass of the ice you added times delta H, that equals, when you solve the equation from before, Q of ice water plus the Q of uh, just the regular water plus the Q of the calorimeter. Okay, so it's, you just moved all those over, you're solving for the Q of ice. You happen to know the mass of ice that you added. You measured that. Here's the delta H. And then the Q of the ice water. That's the mass, 15. The CSP. And then 8, remember, minus 0. For Q of the water, we just found that. That's the negative 3556. Five, and for Q of the calorimeter, we just found that. That's the negative 3349. Three, you add all those up, you get 6403. You finally divide by that 15, and you should get a delta H of 427. That should be a positive number, because in order to melt ice, you have to put energy into the system uh, to cause the ice to melt and go into a liquid. So because that's an endothermic process, it's a positive number. This will be in joules per gram.